When it comes to getting out there on the trails on your e-mountain bike, there are a few items that are gonna be your necessities rather than your luxuries. So today, I'm gonna be running through a basic list of your needs, not your wants. Number one on every rider's list should be protecting your head via means of a helmet. Now there's lots of different options out there and the type of riding that you do really dictates that type of helmet choice. Now for this type of riding and most of my riding, I like to run an open face helmet. The great thing about an open face helmet is that you've got lots of ventilation and you've got great vision and you can easily put eyewear on if needed too. Now the next level of protection is gonna be a semi-style helmet like with a removable uh, chin guard. So that is blending the mix of full face and open face. You put the full face chin bar on when the going gets technical and you get a little bit out of your depth just for that bit more protection. Then when you don't need that protection, you can take the chin bar off, stick it in your backpack and carry on riding. Then you can get the three quarter style helmets, which is much like a motorcycle trials helmet. So this goes over your ears and protects the back of your head well. And again, great vision, but it can become a little bit hotter than a regular open face helmet. Now, if you want the ultimate protection, a full face helmet is gonna be your best bet. This gives a massive protection around your face, slightly limited vision, and it can become a little bit hotter on those longer rides. But if you want ultimate protection, full face is the one. Key features to look out for when buying or choosing your helmet are the size. There's no consistency on sizing, so make sure you try before you buy. The visor or the peak, can it be moved? Some visors can move up to allow for goggle or eyewear fitment. Then there's the liner. You can have MIPS, which is multi-directional impact protection. This is a liner that allows the helmet to slide when you hit the ground, reducing force and the likelihood of concussion. And the rear retention device allows you to fine tune the tension whilst riding. And another great feature to look for is the vents and the helmet net. This protects you from getting insects and falling debris inside your helmet. Now, a multi-tool is a great thing to have in your riding pack. These things can literally be lifesavers on the side of the trail, or you can even tweak your bike back at home in the workshop with one of these. Now, the key features with a multi-tool is gonna be a range of Allen key sizes, all the way from two mil up to eight mil. And on there, you want a chain tool, you want a Torx key, screwdrivers, tire levers. It's gonna get you out of most situations on the trail. But the main thing is to buy a really good quality one, because if you buy a cheap one, it's probably gonna fall apart or even snap. Now, an essential item for setting up suspension on your e-mountain bike is gonna be the shock pump. Now, this is gonna adjust the pressure and the air suspension on the front and the rear of your e-mountain bike. If you've got it too soft, then the bike's gonna be all compressed and the bottom bracket's gonna be really low. If you've got it too hard, well, the suspension isn't gonna be as effective and it's gonna be a really harsh ride. Now, taking a look at the shock pump, it kind of looks like a regular mini pump that you use to blow up your tires, but this thing can pump up to really high pressures. 360 PSI is capable from this pump. Now, it has a big flexible hose on there with a Schrader valve connection, meaning you can get it into those really awkward frame designs. Now you can get analog faces on there and digital gauges, which are gonna tell you how much pressure you're running. Now we've done loads of videos here on EMBN on how to set up your suspension. Gonna leave some links down in the description down below. Now chamois or padded shorts, call them what you like. They're a great idea when it comes to riding your e-mountain bike because the most efficient way of riding your e-bike is gonna be sat down grinding away in the saddle apart from when you're descending, of course. Now these come in lots of different options. You get bib shorts, which have shoulder straps, which come up over your shoulders. They're great at staying in position, but can be a bit of a faff if you need to go to the loo in the middle of the woods. Or you can get shorts, which can be waterproof. They can have storage options in there. They're really worth spending the money on because as I say, you're gonna be spending a lot of time in the saddle on your e-mountain bike. Now the drivetrain on your e-mountain bike is gonna take an absolute hammering. The cheapest item to replace on it is gonna be the chain because this can wear and stretch pretty quickly. And the tool that you need to check the chain is gonna be the chain checker. Now this measures the stretch and how worn that chain is. And as I mentioned, it's cheaper to replace the chain than it is the cassette or the chain ring. 
The chain checker is a really simple tool that's gonna to save you a load of cash in the long run. All this does is slots between each link on the chain and measures how much stretch and wear is going on with it. It's cheaper to replace the chain than it is the cassette or the chain ring. Really cheap tool, but definitely really worth it. Adjusting tire pressure or fixing flats is all part of riding your e-mountain bike. Now the way we adjust tire pressure is by use of a pump and adjusting tire pressure is something you definitely need to get on top of. Too hard or too soft, you're definitely gonna know about it out and about on the trails. Now when it comes to pumps, there's a few different options. On the trail, we have the mini pump or the CO2 canister. CO2 is great, it's a single use only, but a really quick way of inflating your tire and a super lightweight too. And the old faithful, the mini pump, is gonna get you out of any sticky situation and will be there for you over and over again. If you're back in the workshop, it's a track pump or a tubeless pump. Now the track pump, big handle on there, big air chamber, super quick at pumping up your tires. And the tubeless charger pump, where you charge the cylinder up, flick the switch, and boom, your tire inflates. Simple as that. A snap chain is a fairly common occurrence when you're riding your e-mountain bike and the quickest way to get back on the trail is by using one of these. Now this is a quick link, super cheap and they're fairly easy to use too. Now if you're gonna fit one of these to your bike, you're gonna need a chain tool just to split the chain so you've got two blunt ends, insert the quick link and snap it back together. Really easy to use, super quick and a definite worthwhile purchase. A front mud guard is an essential item when it comes to those winter muddy rides. All it's gonna do is keep all that spray off the front wheel off of you and your bike. Now there's a few different options when it comes to front mud guards. You can get the cheaper style flaps, which basically zip tie to the inside of your fork arch, or you can get the more moto inspired options just like these. Now these can either bolt to the inside of the fork arch, or again, zip tie or Velcro to the fork legs. And these are really great at keeping all that spray off of your face. You can get a mud guard to the rear. You can get short ones, which are gonna protect more of the bike and the linkage and the shock or you can get the full coverage rear ones, which are gonna stop all that spray off the back wheel covering you behind. But mud guards are an essential item when it comes to muddy rides. Now chain lube is a great way of making your e-bike work really efficiently. It's also gonna make your drivetrain last a lot longer too. Now there's three different types of lube available. You have dry lube, which is the summer and dry conditions. Now this evaporates super quick and leaves a non-tacky chain so it doesn't pick up all that trail debris. You get wet lube, while well, this is for wet and winter conditions. This penetrates uh, the rollers really deeply and won't wash off when it gets uh, hit by water. Then you have a general purpose lubes, well that's the best of both worlds. When it comes to applying chain lube, I tend to favor a dropper bottle over a spray. It's a really great way of directing that lube onto the chain really efficiently and you don't risk that overspray possibly contaminating the rotors too. Now an essential item that you want to be putting in your riding pack is going to be the good old faithful inner tube even if you're running tubeless tyres because with tubeless it's not 100% fail safe and you can get big slits or holes in your tyres that even the plugs won't repair. So sticking an inner tube in could save the day. Now when it comes to inner tubes, I tend to purchase a 29 inch version with a pressed valve, meaning this is pretty universal if I was to be saving me or my riding mates out on the trail. Size wise, you can actually change the size of the inner tube by rolling it back into itself, creating a smaller inner tube. And with the valve, well that's pretty universal too, meaning it's gonna fit Presta and Schrader valve drillings on a rim. So you could save the day with just one inner tube. So there you are, a few essential items I think every e-biker needs. If you think I've left anything out, get involved down in the comments box down below. Love to hear from you guys. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN to make sure you're not missing out. And give us a find and a follow on social media too. Thanks for watching.